Right now, my boyfriend has my husband on a hook in a torture room. Why'd you marry him is not the question here. And I swear to God, if Jesse kills him, we are done. Hey guys, we're talking about Preacher episode five. We're almost halfway through the season. As always, if I get anything wrong or you just wanna say hi, hit me up on Twitter at RyanEricP. And also be sure to subscribe to GameSpot Universe because we are breaking down some other awesome TV shows like Twin Peaks and Game of Thrones. So let's jump into it. Episode five of Preacher, warning, there are spoilers ahead. Following episode four's shocking reveal that Tulip is in fact married to Victor, this episode served to share some backstory on Tulip and Jesse's past. And that brings us to Dallas, Texas, the title of the episode. Now, this specific backstory isn't something that you'll find in the comics, but it's a welcome addition to the show to develop both of these characters and their motivations. We already knew what happened between Carlos, Jesse, and Tulip, but now we got a glimpse of how Tulip and Jesse dealt with losing their baby. Jesse basically spent a whole bunch of time just drinking beer, watching rodeos, and discussing John Wayne with his friend Reggie, who rolls joints using pages from the Bible. You like John Wayne? You don't? I think he's kind of patriarchal. John Wayne is of course an awesome reference to the comic books. The Duke was an important figure in the books and helped guide Jesse through some tough times. He was kind of like an imaginary friend or guardian angel. I'm not so sure we'll get to see that in the TV show, but it's cool that they finally referenced him. Jesse is clearly very fond of John Wayne despite Reggie's criticisms. We quickly find out how hard it's been on Jesse and Tulip to get pregnant again. In addition to that, they're done working for Danny. Obviously losing that baby changed their lives. They're no longer working for Danny any longer and they want to commit to new work. They also are committed to each other. Till the end of the world, right? Till the end of the world. That's the second time we've heard these two say that line, and of course it's a reference to the comic books. To illustrate exactly how routine their lives have become, we get an awesome montage of Jesse's day to day. In this show's context, it kind of felt like a callback to hell, on Earth at least. Obviously Jesse was in Dallas, but he seemed to be in his own personal hell at the time. The previous montages we've seen in this show have depicted hell for Arseface and for the Saint of Killers. So ultimately we find out that Tulip hasn't exactly been honest with Jesse. She actually gave up on real estate after a few weeks and went back to work with Danny. She's also been secretly taking birth control. After he finds out he's been lied to, we see an extremely violent and dark side of Jesse where he basically takes his frustrations out on Reggie. The poor dude was just enjoying a beer. Clearly Jesse needs a change. I'm going back to Anvil. I'm going to be a preacher. And that's another departure from the comic books. Jesse decides that he's going back to Anvil to start with a clean slate, but in the books, it's Jesse's family that tears Tulip and Jesse apart. Specifically, Jody and TC, two characters that we haven't seen yet in the show, but I hope we do. They find him in Arizona and force him to return home with them. And if he doesn't, they're gonna kill Tulip. So he agrees, he's punished in the coffin, and he eventually becomes a preacher in Anvil, Texas. Back in the present day, Cassidy goes over to Victor's place to talk to Jesse on Tulip's request. Did you know I was rich once? Yeah, bloody years ago. And here's another deviation from the books. Cassidy wasn't rich in the books. He was more of a traveling nomad with a drug problem who would make friends in every city he visited. In the comics, he lived many years in poverty, and this still might be the case in the TV show, but he's not ready to reveal this to Jesse yet. Despite all this, it's clear from this scene that these two share a bond that can't be broken. They are close like brothers and will stand by each other throughout the story. So unsurprisingly, Jesse decides to let Victor live. As painful as the entire thing was, Jesse loves Tulip and doesn't want to lose her again. He's clearly been so consumed with his search for God that he's kind of neglected his relationship with Tulip. Episode five ends with the Saint of Killers. No surprise here because he was tracking the word to Victor's mansion. The saint kills every single one of Victor's men and executes Victor without even letting the man explain himself. Thankfully though, he spares his daughter Allie after she tells him that she knows where he can find Jesse. So that's where episode five leaves us, but how about some other things that I noticed in the episode? We know Jesse's a big fan of Ratwater whiskey, but he used to be a beer guy. His go-to choice, Glue Rooster. Sounds tasty. Who doesn't love a good montage? That's two this week. Sure, it might not have topped the one we saw in Game of Thrones, but it was fun. Also, less poop involved is always a good thing. This was fun. Cassidy and Tulip are big fans of Booberry, but Allie isn't fond of a blueberry flavored cereal with marshmallows. I found it a little funny that a vampire enjoys one of General Mills monster themed breakfast cereals. I guess Count Chocula was a little too on the nose, so they opted for the Blue Ghost. 
If Jesse wasn't intimidating enough, the shot of him holding a bloody foosball bar was spectacular. I'll never look at foosball the same way. Sheets are silky bastards, eh? I think a couple of hundred foreskins gone into making those easily. Yep, Cassidy still enjoys those foreskin jokes. Just how boring was Jesse's time in Dallas? He was literally watching paint dry on the TV with that Bob Ross cameo. Does anyone else get the vibe that Denny is dead? It seemed as if Allie was trying to let them know, but no one gave her any attention. In the preview for next week, we get to see some familiar looking illustrations of the saint from renowned artist Glenn Fabry, who actually did the cover art for Preacher and Hellblazer. Fabry has also repainted some of the covers with the AMC cast. Pretty awesome. GameSpot Universe is going to San Diego Comic-Con. We're bringing Comic-Con to you. That's right, covering all your favorite shows like Rick and Morty, Legion, and Westworld, hot new movies and comics, toys and collectibles, tons of amazing cosplay, and we're giving away this exclusive Universe t-shirt. Subscribe to GameSpot Universe on YouTube so you don't miss a thing.